All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from North Carolina by Nick Shaw. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on. Really appreciate it. Yeah, and Nick is the founder and CEO of Renaissance Periodization, a diet and fitness company founded on evidence-based practices to help our members achieve their health, athletic performance, and physical goals. And Nick, yourself, you're a former competitive powerlifter, bodybuilder, and you've coached numerous world-class athletes and CrossFit champions, uh, Olympians, UFC fighters, Navy SEALs. Uh, so the the uh, you know quite a quite an amazing range of, of people you've worked with, um, Nick. So when we start off, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, fitness for success. But let's talk, uh, uh, let's start off, right? Say people are, are watching this and, uh, you know, they're thinking, okay, I get it from a fitness, physical fitness point of view, but what about from a, from a business point of view? I think people often separate their, you know, the mind body and the mental, the mental fitness and the physical fitness. They think there's two completely separate things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things that I quickly realized was just how similar a lot of these processes are. And no matter what you want to be successful in, there's these handful of traits that whether it's fitness, whether it's business, whether it's overcoming adversity, successful people have all these things in common. And when I started reading just like a bunch of different books and obviously, you know, my background's in fitness. So I have a pretty mm -hmm. sense of knowledge in that, but, you know, just started reading tons of other things and listening to other successful people that don't have anything to do with fitness, but you just hear their stories, you hear what they have to say. And all these things are just so similar that that's when I really started to take notice. I'm like, wow, like these same principles that would apply for fitness also apply to business. They apply to, you know, sale, you know, whatever it is. And so one example might be just having, you know, some discipline and having a longer term time horizon. That's sort of the idea of delayed gratification. So in fitness, that's obviously huge because what do we want yeah. to do sort of naturally? Well, we want to eat really good tasting foods and probably sit around and, you know, watch TV and stuff that's easy, but that's probably not best for us long term. And so, you know, I would imagine, I would love to get your take on this, but, you know, with sales, like, you probably don't become a really super successful salesperson overnight, right? You have mm -hmm. to lay that foundation. There's a ton of hard work involved. There's a ton of studying, practicing, reading, learning, and you can't kind of come in to it with that mindset that I'm going to be instantly successful. It's like, no, I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to do what I need to. And then eventually over time, I'm going to keep getting better and better, which lo and behold, sounds exactly like fitness. Yeah, no, it, it does, and and uh, I'm I'm glad you raised that the the idea of instant gratification because yeah, we live in a in a world today where everything is supposed to be easy, instant gratification, you know, and and unfortunately, you know, that has got into people's psyche a little a little bit or a lot. Um, yes. But your point is a good one. Yes, I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't expect to start lifting weights today and be ripped and look like Mr. Universe in two weeks time. I mean, you would have enough sense to know that that's not going to happen. Right. But to your point is we often believe that in other pursuits that we don't even need to practice anymore. Like we got, we have a job and we do it every day. So we don't have to practice. Yeah. No, totally. And I think, you know, maybe there's a little bit of that complacency aspect, but also maybe a little bit of uh, ego. And, and I can speak from my own experience that, uh, you know, early on when I was kind of building RP, this is probably 2015, 2016, I was so busy and focused on, you know, essentially just all these daily tasks that I overlook the idea of self-education and learning more and all that stuff. And sort of later on, once we hired more people, brought them in, and I had now a little bit more time to, to do things. I realized just how backwards that was because I probably missed a couple of years of doing that. And that's one of those things looking back, I'm like, oh, of course, I wish I would have been doing that. So, yeah, hopefully people, I would say if there's one big takeaway, it's just, you know, always, always keep working to get a little bit better. There's almost certainly something more you can do to, to learn or the, the beautiful thing about fitness. And I love this example is because mm -hmm. there's always more weight you can lift. There's always more reps you can do. Uh, there's always more, you know, sets, you can always get faster, you can maybe get a little bit leaner, et cetera, et cetera. And when you take, and that's why I love fitness, right? Because you can take that mindset and then put it in anything else. You can always just keep working to get better and better and better over time. Yeah. And I think that's a, I think that's a great point for, for people to take on board because although, um, 
it's like it's like anything else right i mean you can do things for a long time and you can be good at, but but i think the complacency part is is important because i mean i'll take from my own martial arts you know we sometimes go in and you know you've been doing it for 16 20 years or whatever it is and sometimes we go into class and the master just has us working on the most basic uh, the most basic techniques ones that you've done thousands and thousands of times over but always finding some way of improving it or you've become lazy or you have like modified it somehow yourself to make it easier for there's always something and i think the complacency is a big factor in work because obviously like if you if you applied that to fitness you know you'd 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 get to a certain point and then you just go backwards yeah there's a really good story i forget maybe what book it's from or who said it exactly but it was about kobe bryant and they, they walked into a practice and he was just working on the most basic of moves. And they're like, well, you're Kobe Bryant. Like, why would you be doing that? And he's like, I'm Kobe Bryant because I work so much on these basics and because people tend to overlook those basics. And again, if we apply that back to you know, my background in fitness, sometimes people expect there to be, you know, this like magical supplement or this like quick fix that is going to somehow give them this, you know, those instant results or anything where it's like, no, it doesn't work like that. You go back, take a step back, master those basics, which really is just consistency and adherence, but it's again, in that longer term perspective. And that's where really all the results are made. And I think it's pretty similar to, you know, most other things in, in life. Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, I think, uh, that basically, uh, I mean, take sales, for instance, I mean, if you're in a slump in sales, one of the first things you probably should do is go back and make sure that you are executing on all of the fundamentals. Are you doing all the things that you used to do that made you maybe successful in the first place? You know, it's like, a, as we said, with fitness, I mean, if you're hitting a plateau, or you're going backwards, you go back, I'm, is my form, am I still paying attention to my form? Am I you know, doing it correctly? Am I dedicating myself enough to it? So I think it's I think there's a huge, um, there's a huge com comparison there between between the two, because as I said, I think when things aren't going well at work or whatever, the first thing you should do is look, are you executing on the fundamentals? Absolutely. Yeah, couldn't agree more. That's the, sometimes you just got to go back to the basics. And I think oftentimes, because people are, it, it just seems so simple and so basic, that people think that there has to be more to it. But <laughs> the tricky part is to really be successful it's the, the people that just stick with those little things that don't really seem like you're adding much to it. But the secret really is they just keep doing them and doing them, not for you know a couple of days or a couple of weeks, but for months and years and decades. And when you take, again, I love this, the longer term time horizon, when you approach it like that, it all makes so much more sense because a lot of people just aren't willing to you know, put in that much work or effort and or they just get bored with it. And so they kind of want to go to something else that's, you know, more exciting. Yeah, no, and I think that's a huge, that's a huge point there as well, is that, uh, you know, there's always shiny new toys, there's always promises, you know, of things that are too good to be true, because they are not true um and and we and it's very tempting to gravitate towards them because yeah do, becoming excellent at something is is an incremental process and requires a lot of hard work and it's called almost counterculture to what's been what we're being bombarded with these days of everything being instantaneous so um so the one takeaway is if you're in the minority right now and you go no i'm going to go the hard route and do put in the hard yards and do it incrementally you'll get there faster than the people taking the shortcuts who, who either won't get there or won't sustain and that's yeah 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 that's the thing and, and i actually end my book with essentially that thing in, in the in the conclusion where it's like you, you essentially have two choices you can try to look for all these shortcuts and you kind of end up nowhere right and you keep looking mm -hmm. for that and, but if you instead of wasting all that time you just focus on the basics and you just kept working on those marginal improvements over time you, that that is the secret and it is a really fundamentally hard concept for people to understand because like you said social media we're bombarded with this stuff every single day of you know hey so and so is doing xyz why am i not there and again like that's just the wrong approach to take because you just have to focus on yourself and that gradual improvement over time and that's that's it 
Yeah, and I and I just think, unfortunately, um, that that's a message that we need to keep getting out there because I think, as I said, I mean, the, we're we're swimming against a, a, a pervasive culture. Um, but it is, but but um, so tell me a little bit about when you've worked with some of the people that you've worked with, like UFC fighters and Navy SEALs and Olympians, right? So I mean, they are at a different, at a completely different level of you know training and endurance and all of that. But they obviously as well hit their hit their points of when they're struggling and they can't move forward or they're, you know, they have to motivate themselves to, to continue to do so. Um, what is that process like for people like that? And what can we learn from them? Yeah. So one of the things that really stands out to me about these just super high level performers is we like to think that, you know, wherever we are, that it requires X amount of work to, you know, become a little bit better than yeah. average. And that's true. But like the amount of work, becomes exponential that you have to do to go from, you know, average to above average to good to really good to like great is way up here. And that was the coolest thing for me is, you know, I got to see some of these people train in person before. Um, yeah, for example, uh, Rich Froning, who's kind of like the, the Michael Jordan in the sport of CrossFit, his entire life is dedicated to that. And I think a lot of people overlook that because they're like, oh yeah, you know, I want to be really great. I want to be the best. You know, I'm going to go train for, you know, an hour or two each day. And then you take a step back and you're like, no, this guy's training like five hours a day. Like, are you willing to go that far? Because that is what it takes to be the absolute very best in what you're doing. And a lot of times, like when you explain that to people, they're like, oh, okay. Why? Well, I, I thought that I wanted to be really good, but it turns out I actually didn't want to, to be quite that good because I'm not willing to pay that price because people don't understand the idea of trade-offs in there. Yeah, no, I, and I think that's a great point as well, is the, is the trade-off is that the people who reach elite status, uh, uh, you know, they have, they've made the conscious decision to dedicate their lives to it. And I think that's, that's often part of the problem is that people aren't, don't, you know, they want something, but they're not willing to make the compromises and everything comes with compromises because if you're going to become elite at something, you're going to have to, as we said, dedicate an enormous amount of time to it. So how important is that to you? Absolutely. It's all about trade-offs and the choices that you want to make. You know, I'm sure we could probably have a little bit of a discussion about, you know, the, uh, the idea of deliberate practice and to truly become an expert, you just need, you know, so many hours of, of literally, but it's not just any hours to it. It's actually that deliberate practice over time that builds up to it. And again, like there's just a lot to that because people think that, oh, you know, I'm just gonna go in and again, I think it goes back to a little bit what you said about complacency. Well, you can't just kind of keep doing the same things. Like you have to kind of have a set plan in place and then you have to go out and execute it. Then again, it's a lot of different factors that make people successful, but so so often I think people overlook just that baseline of that work ethic and just really what's involved to it. And then again, you show that to people and they go, ah, you know what, uh, I'm okay not being you know, the, yeah. the, the best. And the thing about taking away from stuff like that, though, is, I mean, you don't, you know, it doesn't always have to be at that, at that level. Yeah. Um, in order for you to, you know, you can dedicate yourself to your job or whatever, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be the equivalent of training, you know, eight hours a day for a UFC fight or something. But even those people um, who have dedicated themselves, like they are, yes, they're extraordinary individuals, but they make, but they make a choice, right? Because I'm sure there's plenty of, I mean, can you imagine if you're in in camp for for a, uh, for an upcoming bout, and you know you have to do these eight hours every day, and you're doing all these different you're doing all these different martial arts, you're doing physical fitness, you all of that. It's got to be days you wake up and you just go, oh, I can't face this today. But they know they have to, and I think that's the difference is that mindset piece about how they force themselves to just do it when they don't feel like doing it. Yeah, well, so the one of the things that stands out to me is because I heard this from this is no one knew that they were, again, I was interviewing them for you know, a podcast that we do and talking with some of our athletes and all of these top people just kept saying the same thing. And they had no idea that, you know, we were talking to different ones, mm -hmm. but they, I, I kept, kept coming back to this idea and I would ask them specifically, I'm like, what do you do on the days when you don't feel like it? Because everyone has those days and pretty much verbatim people said, I just show up and I just get started. Because yes, you're going to have those days. I just show up. I just get started. And guess what? Usually once you show up, you get going a little bit. You start feeling better. And then it builds upon itself. And before you know it, like, oh, hey, well, you now you had a pr productive session or uh, practice, whatever it is. 
So again, that just goes back to that discipline of actually just showing up and putting in that work because there's absolutely going to be a lot of days where you probably don't feel like it. So some people might just go, ah, oh, you know, I don't feel like it. So they're not going to show up at all. But those people, again, the consistency over time, they just keep showing up. They just keep doing it. And, you know, that's really a, a big separator, just having that discipline over the long term. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think the showing up part is, uh, and and I think, and most people have probably experienced that if you do any, if you do any sports or, or physical fitness at all, I mean, there's probably plenty of times, I know for myself, I mean, there's days when I go, oh my goodness, it's time to go, you know, up to, up to the dojang or whatever, or go to boxing and, you know, I don't feel like it and I'm dragging myself, I force myself, but you know, one thing, I've never regretted going, ever. Yeah. I've often not wanted to go because I don't feel like it um, force myself and then be extremely happy that I did. But I, and I think that's the thing about showing up is you never regret showing up. Yeah. Well, you know, basically imagine the same thing in sales. Well, sometimes you just have to keep making those calls no matter what. I mean, you might not feel like it, but who knows, maybe that next sales call is the one that finally, you know, gets you over that hump or it's the next big deal that you have. So there's just a lot to be said about just, putting in that work and I don't think that can be overstated no and I think uh, and I love this I love the story uh, Chuck Norris who does um, you know he does a lot of work with underprivileged kids and stuff but what he always says to somebody when they're about to quit is he says what would you do if you discovered that this obstacle that you're about to quit or if you're quitting now that this was the final obstacle to you achieving whatever you want to achieve right and so that just puts you in that total catch 22 situation, isn't it though? And it's great. It's like, uh, it's like, if you quit now, you could be quitting all the, all the work you've done could go down the drain. Cause you could be just that one obstacle away from success. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's just one of those things and you don't really know. So you just keep showing up and keep doing the work. And you know, if you have that longer term time horizon, you're going to be rewarded eventually just, you just have to recognize it may not be immediate and you know, it might suck a little bit in the short term, but have that long term mindset and it's going to pay off in the long term. Yeah, no, 100 percent. I think I mean, I love that you brought up the, that thing about showing up because I think that's so critical. And yeah, I mean, I know in, in sales, like it's, it's tough. It's tough for people sometimes, as you said, I mean, showing up every day, maybe, you know, hammering out phone calls, getting reject. I mean, it's literally like going to the gym and getting punched in the head like and you don't get to throw any punches back uh, some days. Uh, but it's the showing up, I think that, as you said, I mean, because if you're showing up and you're learning all the time and you're just executing on the fundamentals, maybe when you're in a slump, eventually things will turn around if you stick with it. Uh, and I think that's that's the message for most things. It's like if you just if you stick with it, continue to do the right things, eventually it will come good for you. Yeah, again, and so it it's a tough thing to grasp. It, it really is. And boy, I think there was probably years earlier on where I didn't quite understand that, you know, but you just keep showing up, you keep doing that work, you keep anticipating that, hey, you know what, someday this is going to pay off, and you know, it very likely will, but man, it's, it's a simple concept, right, but it's just not easy, because we are sort of ingrained with that, I need things now, or, you know, so-and-so has this, and I don't have that, and it's a, it's a tough pill to swallow, but I think the sooner people do realize that and switch their mindset, they're going to be so much better off. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. I think once once you just take it, take complete ownership of it and uh, yes. and just dedicate yourself to it, I think that's where that's where it all the magic starts to happen. Um, listen, all of Nick's information is going to be below this video, um, all the links to uh, Renaissance periodization, etc. But before we go, Nick, uh, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yes, yeah, so uh, I, I founded a company called Renaissance Periodization, which, by the way, I absolutely love the way that you say uh, renaissance i think that is the coolest thing in the world like i wish that i could say it like that but uh oh instead of yeah, it's a ren renaissance yeah i know my, my well, son that, yeah. yeah my son corrects me and stuff and i go hey i'm from ireland and we like that english is our it's our first language and um, huh. nowadays and nowadays yeah, yeah. Um, I, I love I said, it I, so don't be lecturing me on pronunciations mate that's what I always yeah, say yeah. to my son. <laughs> yeah, I like I love it so much more. And every time I hear that, like someone that's outside of the US, when they say that, I'm like, oh, man, that's so awesome. 
but uh, yeah, so we go by uh, RP Strength Online. It's a little bit easier to yeah. to say for most people, and you know, myself, I can barely even spell Renaissance periodization. Mm -hmm. So um, we uh, we do online uh, fitness, whether it's nutrition, whether it's training, and you know, we've uh, sort of uh, morphed over the years into selling digital products to creating an app that's available in you know Google and, and Apple App Store. It's uh, basically a nutrition coach in your pocket, so you would enter in a bunch of information about yourself and it's going to tell you how much to eat and all that stuff to help you reach your goals so it's a pretty cool thing and we've been doing that i uh, started rp uh, actually about a decade ago so been in the wow. fitness space for quite some time now yeah this is great i'm just looking at the app right now this is great uh, i would encourage people to, to to check it out uh you know there's one you know technology can be a great help uh particularly in keeping you guiding and having an app and keeping you on track and and, uh, you know, the, I think the whole part is not being on your own, right? Knowing that there's, there's someone, that there's an app to help you and there's people to help you. Absolutely. There's a lot to be said about accountability, right? If we go back to successful yeah. athletes, well, almost all of them have coaches or training partners, or, you know, something like that. They're not doing it by themselves. So uh, you can't overstate the value of just, again, because sometimes it's easy to fall off track, but if you kind of know in the back of your head that, oh, you know, I got to go check this in, or you know, I have to a kind of mark that you know i did what i'm supposed to do it just adds that element of accountability that makes a big difference for a lot of folks yeah absolutely absolutely all right well listen nick this has been fa fascinating as i said uh, the links will be below and i encourage you to go check out the site there's a lot of like really interesting stuff and check out the app and check out the services that uh, uh rp offer i would highly encourage it hey you know what they say? Uh, best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Second best time is today. So maybe, you know, today's a great day to start and get yourself on that, on that journey to, to success in whatever, whatever success means to you. So again, listen, thanks, Nick. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.